today on Beyond Six Seconds. I think a lot of people think a writer is like a career, but it really isn't. It's more like a calling, I think. And if you feel that you need to put words down on paper, then you're a writer. It doesn't matter what your experience is. Some people tend to write in different ways that maybe don't look like everybody else's writing. Style is a personal thing, and I say embrace it. If it's something that you love, do it. Welcome to Beyond Six Seconds, the podcast that goes beyond the six second first impression to share the extraordinary stories and achievements of everyday people. I'm your host, Carolyn Keel. On today's episode, I'm speaking with Esther Hoffneck Curtis. Esther is a blogger, writer, and content creator. She began blogging in 2010 in an effort to cultivate her writing ability. After finishing her bachelor's and master's degrees, she established Parrot Content and Copy to develop her freelance business. In May 2018, she created the Guest Blogger Project and hosted more than 30 guest bloggers on her legacy blog, The Ardent Reader. She repeated the project in October 2018 on Parrot Content and Copy to better understand how the Guest Blogger Project impacts organic social media reach and SEO for the project's host. Esther was born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and now lives in Dover, Delaware. She has two kids, three if you include Mr. Fussy Pants, two parrots, and two guinea pigs. Esther, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited. So happy to have you here. I have to ask you about Mr. Fussy Pants. (laughs) Who is that? So, okay, so that's my partner of six and a half years, and he is fussy. And we've been together a long time, but I gave him that nickname probably the second day I met him. And it's been pretty true to form. And he doesn't like to be identified in any of my posts. So I had to come up with something. I see. That's his alias. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So yeah, Esther, I'm so excited to learn about your guest blogger project and all the things that you've been doing with that and what you've learned since then. So tell me a little bit about what is the guest blogger project and what inspired you to get started doing that? So I have been blogging for the better part of a decade. I started a blog called The Ardent Reader, which basically I cataloged the books that I had been reading. The first year that I did it, I wanted to read a book a week to challenge myself to see if I could do it. And I reviewed those books. And then I realized that that challenge had really kind of helped me develop as far as my education goes and my awareness of kind of the world around me. So I did another yearly blog project. But the 30-day piece actually was inspired by the 30DS project, which is something that was done on LinkedIn, and I took part in it. It basically gives you like a 30-day program in order for you to better understand all of the ins and outs of LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And so they they send you writing prompts and things like that. And I was like, you know what? I bet you get they're getting a lot of traffic, and I'll bet you they're learning a lot about other people, and they're probably increasing their networks. Mm -hmm. Let me try the same thing. I'm going to dedicate my blog in May, 2018 to all guest bloggers. And there was another piece of that, which was, I have people who are talented, who are in all of my networks, who have never written a word or have written, but never published anything. And they sort of needed a little bit of a kick to get them moving, but they also needed an opportunity and they needed some guidelines. And so there is sort of an altruistic piece of it, you know, where I wanted people to begin blogging because it's been so good for me and have kind of a safe place to get their start. Oh, that's cool. We mentioned in your bio that you actually have done this desk blogger project twice already. And the first time when you were first doing it, how did you find guest bloggers to participate in it? So I have a pretty good, solid social network. I started polling people that We're on my Facebook page, obviously, and then some folks on LinkedIn from the 30DS project. But I really just sort of sought out people that I felt would have kind of different perspectives. Some of those people were personal friends and some of them were people I'd never met before. Mm -hmm. I reached out to probably in all maybe 45 or 50 different bloggers and about 34 wound up getting on board. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. And they kind of came out of the woodwork too. When they found out I was doing the project, there were some people who contacted me who had heard secondhand that I was going to be doing it. I see. So did you go on your social media and announce that you were doing this or did you just sort of, you know, use your existing connections of people who you knew either were blogging on and off or you knew could have great content and you wanted to encourage them to write? How did you recruit people for the project? I was terrified to put out a blanket email or a blanket post. So I hand-selected the first group 
and I asked them directly just in the, you know, messages online. And I had some great people that jumped on board right away. Other people that were a little bit hesitant, but I refused to put out a post calling for everybody and anybody because I did not know what I was going to get. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. This at least gives you a little bit more control or just, you know, because it's the first time that you're doing a project like this. It makes sense Mm -hmm. that you have a sense. I wasn't sure what to expect. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. So the first time you said was back in May. What was that experience like? Was it challenging to get people to submit their blog posts in time or what was that like? So it was a hot mess. But I have some project management experience, so I wasn't completely out of my, you know, area of expertise. What I gave myself was about two months almost of prep time. Mm -hmm. I had announced it, I believe it it, like middle of February that I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I wound up doing it in May. And I gave all of my bloggers some pretty specific guidelines. I kept the right, reserved the right to edit. And I also gave them like, you know, okay, I want a 500 to 700 word post. I gave them the day that they would be published and the date that I needed it. I gave them like six days ahead to get their stuff together. Mm. And keeping track of it was tough. I will tell you, keeping track of 30, it turned out to be 33 or 34 bloggers in the end, uh, keeping track of who's turned in what. Yeah. (laughs) It's like I had Excel sheets coming out of everywhere, but yeah, it was tough. Wow. But it was very rewarding. Yeah. I can imagine that it takes a lot of organization. You almost need like a gigantic project plan in Excel to keep track of all of the different people and where each blog post is in the uh, process of being submitted. Yeah. And there were some people who actually didn't want to be edited, which I had to cut some people. I have a certain standard that I wanted to keep. And I wasn't asking for people who were super experienced. I just wanted them to be willing to have edits if they needed them. And there were some people that, that accepted edits and they were ready to learn. And I was so excited about that. So, you know, it takes all kinds to do a project like this. Yeah. Did you have to do a a lot of editing to the posts? Shockingly, most people, I mean, I was really proud of everybody that participated. They worked so hard on their blog posts. I would say that that there was very minimal editing. Mm -hmm. My one friend who she hates that I do this, but she and I differ very, very much on which kind of punctuation is appropriate. And uh, she sent me her piece and she said, I know you're going to tear me up with this Mm -hmm. punctuation. And I sure did. (laughs) (laughs) But she deserved it. But most people were really, really, they had done a, a good job. I was pretty impressed. That's great. I had seen some of the comments as you were advertising your post. And I know a lot of times, you know, people would kind of come to you and say, you know, I'm not really a writer. And so, you know, either I've never done this or I don't think of myself as a writer. I'm not a good writer. But um, I guess a challenge like this really gives people an opportunity and and a reason to try something like this and get some feedback, too. Right. One person in particular who I adore, I actually work with her and she wrote a little poem about a bird. And she told me a hundred times, I am not a writer. I am not a writer. And I said, you are a poet. Don't try to tell me you're not. I think a lot of people think a writer is like a career but it really isn't. It's more like a calling, I think. And if you feel that you need to put words down on paper, then you're a writer. It doesn't matter what your experience is. Some people tend to write in different ways that maybe don't look like everybody else's writing. Style is a personal thing. And I say embrace it. If it's something that you love, do it. Yeah. And I feel like the still of writing is still really important. You know, even in our day of social media and texting and, you know, 140 characters on Twitter, just the ability to write and the ability to express your thoughts in words and your message and your story is just so powerful. So, and that's really something that comes through practice. I think everybody just needs to write and practice and have those goals so that they can communicate their own stories. And it, you know, it doesn't matter what your goals are in life. It, you know, it really helps you get to where you need to be, I think. Yeah, exactly. And for me, blogging from the very beginning, when I started out, I was looking for a way to express myself and to cultivate my writing skills. I knew I had a little bit of talent, but I didn't have the experience that I needed to become a professional writer. And when I started blogging, I had no idea what I was doing, but I also was reading a lot because that first year that I began my blogging project, I was reading a book a week for a year. 
you know, Stephen King's one of my favorite authors. And he says that if you want to learn how to write, you need to read Mm -hmm. because you'll never know if you're doing something wrong. And even sometimes in audiobooks, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. And even sometimes in audiobooks, I'll hear a word and I'll say, oh my God, that's how that's pronounced. I've been saying it wrong for my yeah. entire life. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing with reading books. You will see the correct spelling or the correct usage in a book and you'll be able to sort of imitate the style of different authors that you like. That's why I called my company Parrot Content and Copy because everything I've learned, I've learned by copying or emulating you know, authors that I really love or people who I've seen ideas that they've had and I've thought, oh my God, I could do that. So the parroting piece, you know, (laughs) and the faking it till you make it, that's the other piece. Mm -hmm. A great play on words. Wonderful. Yeah. That's awesome. (laughs) And especially with your own parrots that you have in your life. And uh, you mentioned to me right before we recorded that the colors of your website for parrot content and copy are based on the colors of your little parrot. So that's a wonderful integration. Well, he's cute. And these colors, you know, nature, mother nature puts these guys together and, and they just are so beautiful. Yeah. So. so, okay. So you did the guest blogger project for the first time earlier mm-hmm. this year. So what inspired you to do it again this past October? So I wanted to try, I actually had a few people that were left over from the original project that I really wanted to blog and I didn't have the opportunity. So I had a collection of people from that. And I was thinking also I would really like to repeat it to better get, uh, well, okay, for one thing, the first time I did it, I did it on a blogger blog. So the analytics that I collected were kind of slim. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they have good analytics for a free blogger platform. So this time around, I did it on my Wix website and their analytics actually weren't that much better. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to compare and contrast. And I also wanted to think about You know, the more keywords I use that are appropriate for my business in each post, I wanted to see what that did for my SEO. But that really wasn't the whole purpose. It was kind of like a byproduct. So every time anybody would write a post and link back to my site, I got traffic, which was super exciting. Mm. And I felt like there are a lot of content bloggers out there that kind of write about things they're not really interested in. They are not really getting credited for their work and they're not able to build strong portfolios. And I just felt like that was something that I could include in this project, give people credit, get them excited about sharing their words with the world and having a platform to do it. And that's basically it. I I really want to inspire other people to blog because it's been so good for me. And that's kind of more of the purpose than anything else. And there are people that really, really want to write and don't know how to get started. And for me, that's what blogging was. Yeah. No, that's cool. And it's really interesting that you were able to see in the analytics that your traffic was growing as the blog post got out and linked back to parrot content and copy. In the analytics that you saw, were there any other interesting findings that you noticed either, you know, the first time or the second time compared to the first time? Yeah, actually, the first one was much better. I had a lot of people that I knew, I think, in that one and that, you know, were a little bit closer to my like organic social networks. Mm-hmm. But I was shocked when I, because I didn't look at the analytics for the entire month. I was like, I'm just going to wait till the end and mm-hmm. see what happens. But okay, I had been blogging for what, eight years at that point. And I had had only 30,000 hits for that entire time that I'd been doing it. Mm-hmm. But in the month of May, just in the month of May alone, I got 12,700 and some hits wow. on my blog. And that was just that one month. And now it's up to, I think it's up past 50,000 at this point. Wow. So I wanted to show people that by giving others the opportunity to say something, to post on your site by hosting one of these projects, you could really build more of an organic reach that lasts because it continues after the project is over. Mm. And it was probably, I think the next month, like June, I had like three or 4,000 hits on it Mm -hmm. just from, you know, the gradual people coming on it, onto it later, you know, coming upon it later. So it was huge for increasing my reach and sort of making people aware of what I was doing at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I should mention that Parrot Content and Copy, that is that is the name of your blog now on your, your Wix site, but it's also the name of your freelance writing business. Do I have that correct? Right. So I do writing, editing. I'll do anything basically that has to do with communications and copy. I've rewritten a few people uh, or a few companies' website copy because it's just been kind of blah, you know. And I did that professionally in my day job for a long time. But I really want to, in the long run, I'd much rather be a blog consultant, give people advice and guidance in order for them to succeed. One of the things I've learned a lot about in my time has been about branding and making sure that you're consistent along all of your social media outlets. I've also learned a lot about how to build certain following in like, especially LinkedIn. I did a lot on that this year. I actually very carefully built my Twitter network too. It took a while and I'm still building that, but it sort of grows on its own after a certain point. I have a Facebook page that actually gets a lot of traffic, not as much as anything on LinkedIn though. LinkedIn people are great. (laughs) You're one of my LinkedIn people. Yes, absolutely. They're (laughs) wonderful. And that's how we met. Yeah, I should say that's absolutely how we met through LinkedIn. Yep, so... Of all the things that I really would like people to know, it's that their voices matter and their experiences matter and crediting other people matters. I really hate it when somebody's words get lost in on a website about, you know, sports equipment, when really their passion is writing about having game nights for families or hiking, you know, those kinds of things. I mean, I feel like people really, really blossom when they have the opportunity to write about the things that they love. Mm-hmm. And they also speak to people. I mean, I've had a couple of people, some of my bloggers who actually wrote about some traumatic experiences. Yeah. And not only was it really good for them, but there were other people who got in touch with me and said, oh my God, that was the most powerful thing I've ever read. I had a family member that went through something similar. And, and just, you know, people don't realize how important their perspectives are. And for me, I think that's one of the biggest lessons I've taken away, that everybody's voice matters. Yeah, that's really powerful. And I think sometimes people are fearful to open up and, you know, bear their souls through writing. And so sometimes you stick with the safer material that's more like the sports equipment side. But it really is powerful when you're writing or you're creating content that is about something that you're really passionate about and that you care about. It won't just be important to you. Other people will see that passion. You'll make connections with the right people. And as you said, it will really help change people's lives and have a real impact. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. I think a lot of times we take people for granted too. I mean, my mother wrote a blog post for the first one that I did, the first guest blogger project. And she's been an origami instructor since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I never knew what got her started. And so she wrote about her very first experience with origami, which was as a child. Mm -hmm. She had a hospital volunteer come around to her bed when she was inpatient. And he folded a bunch of little animals for her. And she had never forgotten that as long as she lived. And at some point she went back, she had taken a book out of the library. By the way, the library is my favorite place in the world. Mm -hmm. And she wound up learning how to do it herself. And last year, I think she got nominated by one of her students to be one of the best origami teachers in the nation. I mean, but you don't know, like we never knew that. My brothers and I never knew that. So Mm -hmm. it was really exciting to uncover some of these things about people that we thought we knew. It was just a cool experience. It really was. That's awesome. And I should mention that in the October run of your guest blogger project, I was also one of the bloggers, which was really exciting. And I'm so happy that I had the opportunity to do that and write something and have it featured on your blog. Oh, yeah. I was like to have you tell your story. Yeah. So content creation, whether it's, you know, audio podcasting or writing, it really does help people find their voices. And I think hearing that feedback from people, either making those connections with people who can relate to uh, the experiences that you're having or or just inspired by your stories is really important. Yeah, definitely. So one of the things that I've actually pitched on my site, I haven't done it for another client, but I'm planning on doing one at the end of the month of November. I am trying to set up a guest blogger project for a friend of mine who actually is a wedding planner and has just gotten herself established. Mm. I want to see, I'm actually planning on doing it almost as an experimentation because, you know, for me, I had a huge social network to begin with 
on both of the projects. And so I really want to see what it's like when somebody has not as much of a network, but quite a lot of support from her community. And so I'm, I'm really interested in seeing how that one works out. I just, I wanted to try because I, I feel like I'm a little bit of an oddity because I've been building my networks for such a long time. Mm-hmm. I want to see what it's like if somebody's starting off cold. Yeah. Um, and so I'm all about experimentation, you know, and I, and that was one of the things I'd really like to, I want other people to try this project, to host their own project. And I wrote a little book about it and how to do it, but I want them to be able to do the same thing and use the guest blogger project hashtag. And once it pops up, I will share it on my own network. So I, I, I want to get as much exposure about it as I can, right. because I think, I feel like there are people that don't realize that by giving other people opportunities to shine, you shine too. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we all, we don't realize that we can be supportive to one another and still remain unique and keep our, you know, unique identities. We're not competition. We're all sort of in this together. So that's kind of my mantra about this project that you can do it. It's a little tough, but you can do it and you can really make some great friendships and really get some great connections and also offer people you know and people you love perspectives that may change their lives. So that's my two cents about Mm -hmm. that. Oh, absolutely agree with that. And I found that in podcasting too. One of my favorite parts is, you know, helping my other guests connect with each other. And, you know, anytime that someone reaches out and said, oh, I heard so-and-so on a podcast and I want to connect with them or I want to talk to them about something. That's like, that's like my favorite thing, honestly, that (laughs) comes out of the podcast. That's cool. So yeah. yeah, So tell me about your ebook, because that sounds like a great resource for people who are thinking about, you know, how do I even run a project like this and how can it help me and the people that I work with? So I know, I know that there are plenty of people out there that don't like to read long books. Okay. And I don't like to write long books. (laughs) (laughs) So I wrote this little 40 page ebook. It's totally affordable. It's like five bucks. And it's also available to anybody that has the Kindle Unlimited on Amazon. And it's called Booster Blog with a Guest Blogger Project. And it's just a very simple, clear path to how to do your own guest blogger project and host it on your site. And it goes into not a lot of detail, but it kind of gives you guidelines because everybody's going to do it a little bit differently. But the basic premise is 30 days, 30 bloggers, you recruit them and you retain editing rights. Mm. And You post them and you promote them as much as you can. And so it's pretty simple. Like I said, it's 40 pages. You can read it in a night easily, but it's just a little bit of guidance on how to do your own. Cool. And in terms of who would be reading, are you targeting it towards people who already have their own blogs or is it really for anyone? Like if I'm starting out, I don't, maybe I don't have a blog would a book like this be good for me for starting a blog or is it mainly for people who are already running their own blogs? So you could do it anytime. You could do it as your first, you know, let me get a bump on my first post or whatever like that. But for me, I had already established my blog and my identity for years ahead of time. I don't know if that's the best way to do it. I'm not sure. I feel like anybody could do it. You just have to have a little bit of coordination and a little bit of understanding that you're going to feel like your head's going to explode at one point. (laughs) Um, But it's pretty practical advice. I think that if you were starting out, you probably want to do a few posts of your own so that you can kind of establish who you are, what your interests are, your identity, your blog identity, if you will. But it's really up to anybody. I mean, everybody's going to do it differently. They all have different styles. That's just the way I did it. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. And that's great that you can really be at any point potentially in your your blogging career or your blogging hobby to uh, to try something like this. Oh, that's great. So you've already shared some of the things that you've learned from doing the Guest Blogger Project. Were there any other things that you learned from this that you'd like to share now or any memorable stories or feedback that you got from either readers or people who participated in the project? I have one person who will stick in my mind forever. She was the very first guest blogger that I had for the May project. And she's a a teacher at my children's school. She has been there, I guess, about five years. She's a music teacher. She has so much charisma. You cannot not love this woman. I did not know that she is in recovery. Oh. 
And when I received her piece, I couldn't stop crying Mm -hmm. because the entire time that I thought that, you know, she's just another, another teacher. She's great, but I didn't know anything about her. Here she is. She has been recovering from a drug addiction this entire time. Fantastic example for my children right there, right in front of me. And I think a lot of times we just miss people. We don't realize how special every single person is. And even now I just, I can remember the first time I read her blog post and I was just like, oh my God, this is going to floor people because a lot of people didn't know. And so when I shared it with my networks, a lot of the people in my network, you know, their kids go to the school that my kids go to. And so we think a lot of times that we know somebody, but when you ask somebody to write about something that they're passionate about, you get some surprises. And there was another gentleman who wrote about his PTSD. And he is a very stoic gentleman who has issues, but never tells anybody about it. And so for him, the blog post project sort of gave other people the courage that they needed to acknowledge their own feelings. So I don't know. I think we walk around around people all day long and we just don't know what makes them tick and what their history is. And so I think anytime that we have the opportunity to learn about others, it makes us better people. So that's kind of my philosophy. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious about people too. I'll ask you more questions Mm -hmm. than you'll ask me (laughs) during the podcast. (laughs) Yeah. And we definitely have that in common because, you know, the whole message behind the name that I picked for this podcast beyond six seconds is going beyond that six second first impression. I mean, it comes from, you know, a study around looking at resumes and that they only get looked at for six seconds, but really it applies to anything. And you're so right that, you know, we only get a a certain impression of people, whether we know them on social media and we see them post about things or we just know them in life, you know, as a a teacher or someone that we work with or or things like that. And there's just so much more behind what people are doing and the reasons that they're doing them. So I think that's exactly that's why when you asked me, I was like, yes, because I totally get what you're trying to do with Mm -hmm. your podcast. I think it's awesome. Thank you. The people that I've talked to about it and like said, oh my God, I'm so nervous. I'm going to be on a podcast tonight. The people that I've spoken to, they're like, that's a great idea. So I'm pretty excited that I'm going to have the opportunity to share this podcast and about your story too with other people because I think that there's not enough Carolyn Keels out there that Mm -hmm. want to know more about people and are are interested in broadcasting the in-depth, personalities and motivations of people. I think you are on point. Mm, Thank you. Thank you. And I really appreciate your support. You know, it's wonderful to get feedback like that. And it's wonderful to know that, you know, that you're making an impact just like it is with uh, the guest blogger project that you've been running. It's awesome. Right. So I know you shared a little while ago that you're planning to work on a uh, guest blogger project to help your friend do it, who's running the wedding business. Do you have any more writing projects planned in the near future like that, like another guest blogger project or maybe something completely different? So I may repeat it next year. We'll see. I would love to have people who are interested in becoming guest bloggers reach out to me. My website is parrotcontent.com, P-A-R-R-O-T-C-O-N-T-E-N-T.com. And there's just an application to become a blogger. My vision for the Guest Blogger Project is to eventually be able to coordinate a series of Guest Blogger Projects for other people and organizations because the project management piece of it is pretty significant. Mm -hmm. It's a headache. It really is difficult. And if it's not something that you have a talent for or have experience with, it can wreck you. So I am interested in helping other bloggers get more exposure I would love to be able to say to a company, you know, hey, let's do for you, let's do a guest blogger project in April. Let's see what it does for your company. And, you know, you never know. You just don't know what that might pan out to be. I have no idea where it's going to wind up, where it will end, but it makes me excited to be able to help other people get started because blogging has been so beneficial to me. Right. That's wonderful. What's the best way for people to get in touch with you, whether they want to learn more about the Guest Blogger Project or if they're interested in buying your new ebook? So everything about the ebook is on my website, but I'm most active on LinkedIn. I'd love it if people would reach out to me. 
It's probably my favorite social media outlet because I feel like you really get a lot out of it. A lot of people hate it, but I can't figure it out. (laughs) So if you haven't done it, you should probably try to get online and learn more about LinkedIn and how to navigate it so that it is uh, more beneficial for you. But that's the best place to get me. I'm under Esther Hoffman Curtis on LinkedIn. Fantastic. Yeah, I'd also put in a plug for LinkedIn as well. You know, it's not the place to park your resume anymore. Really over the past maybe year or two or or so, it's really um, got a lot more engagement and it's a great way to meet and connect with people and build long-term relationships in terms of business and common interests. So that's great. Exactly. So, you know, as we close out the podcast here, is there anything else that you'd like our listeners to know or anything else that they can help or support you with? I think the... Probably the most helpful thing that I've ever done. The only thing that has consistently helped me to grow as a person is reading. And I would encourage anybody who doesn't read or feels like it might just be a waste of time to go to the library and pick up some books and give it a shot. I have grown so much through reading. Everything that I've been able to accomplish in the last few years has been because of reading. I can directly link it back. And it can give you ideas that you never came up with, that you never thought of. And actually, I believe that reading, because reading was my focus for my very first blog, I didn't realize that I was growing both ways through the reading and also through the blogging. I am in my day job, a professional writer. But in order for me to get that job as a writer, which I always thought, oh, I want to be a writer for a living. Not really. I want to be a blogger for a living. Mm -hmm. But blogging helped me build a portfolio of writing and showed consistent progress and consistent growth. And so literally when I went to my first interview for a writer's job, I brought printouts of my blog posts and they accepted that as experience. And so it can take you different places, but reading was really the piece that, I mean, has always been a piece of my life. I'd say keep reading, keep writing. You never know where it'll take you. Yeah, that's that's great advice. Absolutely. Esther, thank you so much for being a guest on my podcast. I really loved hearing about the Guest Blogger Project and the way that you're helping provide a platform for people to share their stories and connect with each other. So that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to Beyond Six Seconds. Please help us spread the word about this podcast, share it with a friend, give us a shout out on your social media, or write a review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast player. You can find all of our episodes on our website, www.beyond6seconds.com. Until next time.